Hey guys, this is my market watch. My name is Mark, and today I'm going to go over some cards that I am thinking that will go up in value eventually, or things that will be relevant in the future in some way or form. Um, this is my first time doing this, um, so bear with me. Uh, I'm still getting the hang of this, you know. Um, I actually wrote down some notes on a piece of paper, because <laughs> uh, this is a lot of stuff. Gee, you know, I'm, I'm not going to remember these things off the back of my hands, like. Any else, anyone else would. But uh, now nah, the first card I want to go over was the Parallel Exceed. The reason I'm looking at this card right here is because it enables rank four plays for decks that usually don't have rank fours or like can go into them real easily, like sprites. Um, another thing to look at this is that basically this enables like cards like these, like Abyss Dweller or uh, Dugaris. This card's coming up a lot too for uh, decks like Dark World, Crystal Beast. And I even seen the trio players uh, go into it at my locals, and also uh, Baguska. These are cards that you want to keep in mind because there's a lot of talks about a new master rule coming around the corner for uh, 2023. So things like this, when you go into new master rules, like they usually the best cards of those like summoning types are what like get used in the following summoning mechanic. So Parallel Seed is also good for the upcoming Trap Trick structure deck um, cause it enables those uh, rank four plays. Uh, the next card I want to go over was Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. I only had these two printings. Which is, I think is pretty neat. Uh, very underrated card. It is a fiend. So if you're running Dark Worlds, you get fiend lock. Um, I believe from that other card from Dabble. Don't remember off the top of my head. Um, another thing too is that since it's a fiend, you can go into it with Live Twins. Since they also have a fiend restriction. And they also have upcoming support coming for them. So a card like this is going to have some relevancy down the road. Then there's dark. I mean, this card is just interesting. I only had one reasonable printing for us common folks. That's a super. I mean, I looked at the graft. It's like a pretty interesting card. It has a little paywall, like once it starts getting over here. But yeah, I think it's due for another reprint. Sorry, Yuja. Um, this is another card that I want to talk about because whenever we start transitioning in between formats and we start getting decks that can spam the field, this card is always like the first card to like rear its head. Um, so this card went up because of Dark Worlds recently, but it's getting like older and it's due for a reprint. But this is one like if it's in your bulk, you might want to bring it out. Um, this is just a generic rank eight. It went up a little bit because of Dark Worlds. Um, pretty good card. I like it. Um, so I, that's why I just want to bring it up because Dark Worlds did have a little hit in the market because things that were irrelevant start becoming relevant. Like Security Dragon. If this is in your bulk, you might want to like pull it out. Also, another thing too about this is that Cyberstorm access is around the corner. So since it's a Cybers card. You know, I mean, because Firewall Dragon, I mean, it's a mini Firewall Dragon. It looks cool. Um, might have some relevancy because of Cybers. This card is actually interesting. This is an archetype that's like never going to die. Always going to be around. You want to get your hands on those Prismatic Secrets. It's a three of, staple. You can't go wrong with this investment. If you are trying to play Cash Tira, I recommend getting this card now. This card is going to go nowhere but up. That entire archetype is going to be insane. Definitely worth. It's a rank 7 generic. It enables their boss monster, Kastira Shingraria. I'm sorry I butchered that name. But it is what it is. This is the future right here. This is a three of, it's a super. It only had one printing in Dabble. 
um, if tier elements ever get hit, this card is like what you're gonna need on deck to play Cash Tira. And let's be honest, like tier elements, uh, <laughs> they're getting lucky, but that luck runs out, you know. This one is also for Cash Tira. If you have this in bulk, I highly recommend pulling. I highly recommend pulling them out. Also, that banishing for cost it doesn't really affect them. They, as soon as you understand how the deck works, banishing is just fine for them. Mass change two. Um, Dark Law is really good. Dark monsters are just running rampant this format. Definitely next format. It's going to be insane. These, the books. The reason these books are so important is because they can actually set this guy face down. And this guy's going to lock you out of all your zones. So you're definitely going to need like multiples of these to like help out. So the car I want to focus on was the Ultra Rare Dual Devastator. You can also get the Lunar Eclipses, but they're, they're all right. Because their boards are so massive on at the end of their turn, like that discarding might be like a big deal and it only sets down two face up monsters, but Book of Eclipse sets them all face down and you can play from there. Secret password, because twins are gaining support. So it only has one printing. I think it's a three of. I don't really play the deck, but that that listing is gonna go down eventually. Let's look at this. Eventually, these are going to be needed. Oh, yeah. If you have the OTS Pack 20, I know it's a common for uh, Naturia Sacred Tree. But the thing is that once this OTS goes out of circulation, there's a three of must for Naturias. And I don't think that deck's going to die off anytime soon. Because these Shizus might get tapped but by the ban list. But they're going to be around for a while. So Naturias will still have good footing in the following formats. Uh, this card, I the only reason I put it up here is because that Lairless monster got unbanned, the Xyz. I'm not really sure. I mean, if you're a Lairless player, I mean, then you want to play a deck. This is something you might want to look into. Uh, Dark Ruler No More, it's a three of. It's always showing how relevant it, it's being. I mean, it's been it was printed on first in 2019. Um, that card is only going to go off from here. It's a three of, you, you can't go wrong. Herald of green light. Um, so these shoes are still going to be around with us for a while because Herald of orange light got hit to one. This is like a backup pseudo hand trap for the deck that can hit like, I guess like dimensional fissure people run it or like any strong spell cards. Um, so this is the thing I want to talk about with the biz deals. Um, I think like power of the elements, I think dabble is going to get their own like theory talking here, theory talking. Like it, it only seems to me that dabble is going to get their own unlimited reprint, like power of the elements is right now because Konami really needs players to have these cards in mass quantity and seeing these prices go up as fast as they did because of how relevant they are in secondary markets like that usually get hit especially since we're transitioning to a much different game than what we're used to i was looking at this card because of the trap trick structure deck um enables ring four plays it's a trap to discard off their new card that they're getting in the structure deck if you have this in bulk might be nice to dig around and look for it. Oh yeah, because of Cyberstorm Access, this card's actually going to show some relevancy. It enables Rain 4 plays to Cybers. If you play in Slime in great format, then you'll know exactly what this does. But yeah, this card's going to be relevant when that card comes out, especially if you're going to run like Cold Talker deck. And that's it for my Market Watch. I hope you enjoy. Thank you.